All right, today we're gonna to talk about something fun, which is spices that actually help uh, slow aging and also help heal your body by reducing inflammation. All right, now I'm gonna talk about spices that you may or may not have heard about. So let's get started. The first one is star anise. Star anise is uh, from Southeast Asia. It is a very unusual looking spice because it's dried and it looks like it has eight points to it. It looks like a star, hence star anise. And it's what's used to make masala chai. It's actually used to make pho, the Vietnamese noodle dish. And it's part of the traditional Chinese five spice powder. All right, you can find it though in your grocery store. Now, star anise, this spice has a bioactive called anethol. And anethol has been shown in the lab to be a potent blocker of inflammation. And the lab research shows that the effects are seen only when you actually give it orally, but not when you actually apply it to the top of your skin. So there's something about the oral administration of anethol that actually makes it anti-inflammatory. Okay, the other thing that star anise has in it is another bioactive called shikimic acid. Now, shikimic acid is a natural chemical that has antiviral properties. In fact, it's so potent that the pharmaceutical industry once went to star anise in order to develop um, uh, the antiviral treatment called Tamiflu. Tamiflu is made out of shikimic acid. That's how potent this actually is to improve your body's immune defenses against viruses. And traditionally, star anise has been used in um, traditional Chinese medicine for actually protecting against infection as well. Okay, where do you find it? You find it in the spice section of the grocery store. If you go to a spice market, you'll see it. These are beautiful, uh, uh, about the size of a penny, and they are uh, eight points on the side of it. Uh, you should definitely check it out. You can also get the powder, but the whole, uh, the whole star is what's really interesting. And you can actually put the uh, star in this. You can put it into uh, any sauce and to get the, um, uh, the flavor out of it. Now, researchers in Korea have even studied star anise for its anti-tumor properties. Now, inflammation is associated with cancer and so it helps cancer grow. So any spice that has anti-inflammatory properties can be useful to counter tumor-induced inflammation as well. So a little bit more about star anise. Uh, it's a fruit actually from an evergreen tree called Elysium verum. Again, it's found in Southeast Asia used in traditional Chinese medicine. It's found in, you can use it to make teas, um, and it's used to fight joint pain and inflammation and even viral infections, which makes a lot of sense given the fact it has shikimic acid. Now in the kitchen, how I use star anise, you can add it to a soup, a stew, a broth. You can actually, uh, if you're making a dessert, uh, you can actually use the fragrance of dessert as well. It's got this uh, very, very light licorice um, essence that's absolutely delightful. I encourage you to try it. All you gotta do is smell it and you'll know exactly what uh, that scent's like. The next spice we're gonna talk about is rosemary. Also one of my favorite spices. I use it uh, during the holiday season uh, to actually cook uh, during the winter time. Now rosemary has rosemarinic acid named after its uh, uh, its uh, source, uh, and rosemary acid has potent anti-inflammatory properties. This has been shown in lab research. It's also anti-angiogenic, rosemary acid, which means it can starve cancers by cutting off its blood supply. It's also a powerful antioxidant. So this, this nice, very spindly branch, it's herb, uh, fantastic uh, health properties. Now, in addition to rosemary acid, rosemary also has another bioactive called borneol. Now, borneol is also anti-inflammatory, and in the lab, borneol also protects nerves. It's neuroprotective, and it's been found to protect against brain injury uh, in lab research. So, this um, uh, really, really interesting uh, herb that's been used for uh, uh, since ancient times has more medicinal properties than we ever expected. Interestingly, the ancient Greeks used rosemary to improve memory during aging, and in fact, it was known once as the herb of remembrance. Think about that, neuroprotection, right? And the lab has been studied. Now, actually there's been other studies looking specifically at rosemary in animal models for Alzheimer's disease. And they found that rosemary can improve cognition and improve memory as well. 
Now for me, I like to use rosemary in a simpler way. I like to use it as a seasoning for soups or casseroles, uh, flavor vegetable dishes, or for roasts. Um, and if actually one of the, my favorite ways to actually experience rosemary is that when it's actually used to, um, as a topping, uh, sprinkling onto focaccia, that Italian bread made with extra virgin olive oil, very light and fluffy. Rosemary really makes that taste good, all right? Taste is obviously as important uh, when it comes to health. Next spice, saffron. Now saffron comes from uh, a purple flower called the crocus. Uh, and the part of the flower that is saffron is the stigma. You know, the little threads that are in the middle of a flower, when a flower opens up, it's got these little tendrils that come up and that's what saffron's made out of it. Now, when you actually find saffron in the spice market, you're gonna recognize it immediately. They're dark red threads, often in a jar, um, or sometimes it can come as a fine powder as well. This is a very, very delicate seasoning. It's got a slightly sweet scent, and it gives any dish you cook a lovely bright yellow-orange color. So it's actually a food coloring as well. And that's why, both for the scent and the color, it's used to make dishes like a classic Spanish paella, the rice dish. It's got this wonderful aroma that comes from saffron. It's also used to make risotto milanese, a yellow risotto that also has a really, really um, delicate taste to it, really absolutely delicious. So what are the uh, bioactives that are found in saffron? Well, there's three of them at least. One is called crocin, one is called crocetin, and the other one's called saffronol, all right? And all three of these bioactives suppress inflammation. And they've been studied in the lab, the bioactives from saffron, against the kind of inflammation that you actually see in rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, and asthma. There's inflammation in the lung. And saffron's also been studied clinically as well. One clinical study from Iran looked at 60 people with type 2 diabetes and gave them saffron or placebo to consume for eight weeks, all right? So what they found was that saffron eaters not only had better blood sugar control, which is another benefit of saffron, but they also had lower levels in their blood of an inflammatory marker called TNF-alpha. So clinically, saffron eaters had lower inflammatory markers in their blood. Now, researchers are also studying saffron to see if it can combat cognitive decline due to chronic stress and also for helping to slow the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. So all that is to come. Lots of exciting research around saffron. But my favorite way to actually use saffron is actually to use it to flavor rice dishes. Again, like a paella or a risotto. I like cooking traditional Mediterranean dishes. And when you buy saffron, here's the thing you want to do. Make sure you go to a, a, a reputable seller of spices and make sure you get the real thing because there's a lot of fake saffrons out there. Real saffron is pretty expensive. It's one of the most expensive spices. It can be more than 400 US dollars per pound. It's like gold, okay? And you only need to buy tiny little amounts of it, just some small amounts of threads, and it flavors up a dish really, really well. So if you find a saffron that is like dirt cheap, Okay, you get a deal, it's probably fake. Uh, and, but buying some of the real deal is actually worth having in your spice cabinet. All right, the next spice I wanna to talk to you about is Sichuan peppercorns or Hua Chao. All right, now this could be the coolest spice you've never heard of because this spice comes from China, Sichuan peppercorns, and it's actually not a pepper, all right? It is the dried berry of something called the prickly ash tree. And the spice part of it is actually the part of the husk or the skin of the berry. The berry is kind of a black seed. You don't eat that. It's kind of bitter. But actually, you peel off the dried husk of it, of the seed, toss the seed away. And that uh, husk is actually what gives you the spice. Now, this spice is used in the spicy cooking of the Sichuan province of China. If you like spicy food, like spicy hot pot, it's going to have Sichuan peppercorns. And it has a bright citrusy uh, fragrance when you actually eat it. And the other thing it does for you, it's got this very, very unusual numbing sensation in your mouth. It's called mala by the Chinese. It feels spicy and tingling at the same time. It activates your nerve fibers. But it's not a chili pepper, all right? It is, a, it is the berry uh, of, a, of a tree, uh, but it has some of the same characteristics of chili peppers. It activates a receptor in your tongue called trip. TRP-V1. Now, chili peppers with capsaicin, the spicy stuff, all right, the heat, also activates TRIP-V1 on your tongue. 
And whether it's chili peppers with capsaicin or it's uh, Sichuan peppercorns, when that trip V1 receptor is activated in your tongue, what it does is it sends a signal to your brain and that brain then releases hormones that activate your body's brown fat, all right? And when your brown fat is activated, triggered by trip V1 and then going to your brain, guess what your brown fat does? It fires up and undergoes a process called thermogenesis that heats up and it burns down the excess fuel that it's gotta draw from your harmful white fat. Good fat, brown fat, burns down harmful fat, white fat, and activating trip V1 with citron peppercorns will actually get that process, kick that process off. Now, a study from Northumbria University in the United Kingdom and the Mirabel uh, Biochemistry Group in Switzerland actually looked at the bioactive in, um, in citron peppercorns. This bioactive is called San Shoal. All right, San Shoal. Uh, they actually got it from the spice, and what they did is they studied 82 healthy volunteers who were between 35 and 55 years old, and they gave the subjects this bioactive sanchoal from Sichuan peppercorns uh, every day for 56 days. And here's what they found. They found even a single dose of sanchoal would actually improve the reaction time and cognitive power and brain power endurance, like how dedicated you could actually focus on a task um, uh, from the subjects and it also reduced their mental fatigue. So Sanchul from the Sichuan peppercorns actually improved performance. That's pretty cool. The other thing that the uh, researchers did is they studied brain blood flow from the Sanchul eaters, and guess what? The people who ate uh, Sanchul uh, from Sichuan peppercorns also had better cerebral blood flow or brain blood flow, which makes sense in terms of the improvement in brain power uh, and brain endurance. Okay. Now, I love Sichuan peppercorns. I don't eat, use it very often. Um, it's sort of one of these things that you put do once in a while, but I definitely would recommend that you give it a shot. And if you don't know what to do with it, look up our recipe online, Sichuan peppercorns recipe, click on a video and watch somebody uh, show you how to use it. And the classic recipes using Sichuan peppercorns come from the Sichuan province of China. So you can check that out, Sichuan cooking, uh, uh, Sichuan peppercorns, uh, and you'll find dishes like Mapo tofu or a hot pot broth, but you can actually use it to cook fish or chicken dishes. And it's actually also used to pickle cucumbers um, uh, for a little summer treat that gives you a little tingle when you have it. All right. So if you love that tingling sensation. Uh, you like this, uh, you want to spice it up. Um, you can also use Sichuan peppercorn powder on nuts that you can actually snack on. Instead of wasabi uh, nuts or peas, try some Sichuan peppercorn for an alternative zing to it. All right, a little goes a long way, and that's what I actually wanna tell you about, Sichuan peppercorns. Now, last spice I wanna tell you about is the classic, turmeric, all right? And this is probably the spice that everyone recognizes by now when it comes to health and wellness, right? You've heard about turmeric, it, uh, it's got something called curcumin in it, and you'd find turmeric uh, in the uh, either the dried spice section of a grocery store, um, it's a bright yellow powder that comes in a jar, but you can also find whole fresh turmeric in the produce section. It's these tiny little root-like things um, uh, that if you break it apart, it's got a real orange middle of it. And the part of the turmeric that we use for spice is called the rhizome, which is similar to the root. It's not quite buried into the ground. It's like the part of the plant that's almost a root that sticks up. Now the plant that turmeric is based on is a member of the ginger family. And that's why the root kind of looks like ginger. And this plant originated in Southeast Asia, and it's very common to use in Indian cuisine uh, and Indonesian cuisine, uh, especially in curries. It's got this warm, peppery flavor. That's what you're looking for when you actually cook with turmeric. And because of its yellow color, turmeric sometimes used as a fabric dye or actually used to um, colorize food as well. Hey there, I have another resource to share with you. It's my free guide to foods for your gut-brain axis. In case you haven't heard, we now know that feeding our gut microbiome, that's your healthy gut bacteria, is one of the most important things you can do to lower inflammation and improve overall health in your body, including brain health. And we're just beginning to learn how taking care of your microbiome can reduce your risk of developing heart disease, dementia, cancer, and many other serious inflammatory conditions. So you don't want to miss out on my guide because I give you five food recommendations that you want to eat right now that will help optimize your microbiome and protect your gut-brain axis. 
Check out this resource. It's available for free right now in the caption below. Now, back to the video. The bioactive in turmeric is called curcumin, and curcumin has powerful anti-inflammatory effects. And this has been studied many times in clinical trials, and it's been shown for its potency uh, uh, in almost every study. In fact, one study that was conducted by the Isfahan University in Iran, they looked at 60 people with osteoarthritis of the knee. This is like really painful uh, wear and tear uh, arthritis in the knee. And what they did is they gave the subjects either turmeric or a standard non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug like naproxen, okay? Uh, and so turmeric versus pharmaceutical every day for four weeks. And at the end of the study, what the researchers found is that turmeric, taking turmeric was just as good as the pharmaceutical anti-inflammatory drug when it comes to reducing the inflammatory marker in the blood called prostaglandin E2. So they gave these people drugs versus turmeric, uh, and they actually found that when it looked at the in inflammatory marker in the blood, that both of them reduced it equally. This is food as medicine in real life. Another study from Spain looked at 68 individuals with knee arthritis, same time, and showed that it decreased the blood marker inflammatory blood marker C-reactive protein, or CRP as well. Again, two different inflammatory markers, all decreased by people with arthritis taking turmeric. Now, curcumin, the bioactive, is also an antioxidant. It also improves metabolism, and my own research shows that it can actually improve the health of your blood vessels, your circulation as well. In fact, curcumin is so potent as a bioactive that when you eat it, your body doesn't want to absorb and hang on to all of it. It kind of kicks it out uh, in your gut. So if you want to hang on to your curcumin, what you want to do is to be able to eat it along with some freshly cracked black pepper because inside black pepper is a natural substance called piperine that helps your body retain curcumin. All right, so that's why turmeric and black pepper are often mixed together like in a curry in order to be able to get the most benefit from this particular spice. So here are some pro tips when it comes to turmeric. If you wanna buy it fresh, you wanna store it in the fridge, make sure you dry it really well. If you're gonna wash it off, which you should, dry it really well by wiping with a towel because otherwise uh, mold can grow very easily grow on uh, uh, turmeric. And if you have powdered turmeric, just start, store it in a jar, make sure it's airtight and keep it in a dark, cool area. And for some cooking tips, I'll tell you what I like to do. I like to add some dried turmeric to soups and stews to give it some flavor, that warm peppery flavor, a little bit of color. And if you're roasting uh, vegetables like carrots or cauliflower, you can sprinkle some turmeric on top of it. It makes it a beautiful color as well as to give it a nice uh, uh, flavor to it as well. The other thing you can do if you're roasting a chicken, for example, you can actually sprinkle some turmeric on the skin and cook it right into the chicken and you'll get some, again, a nice, beautiful, uh, uh, flavorful chicken. And if you wanna also just scramble some eggs, you can also sprinkle turmeric on scrambled eggs as well. Uh, there's so many different ways to use it. Uh, you might've seen it uh, at a um, coffee shop. You can put turmeric into coffee. You can add it to tea. And of course, if you're making your own curry by combining lots of different spices, this is actually where turmeric powder really, really shines. That's it. Five spices that fight aging and inflammation. Hope you learned something from it and thank you for watching. Hi there, if you enjoyed watching this video, I know you'll love the next one. Stay here and check it out and I'll see you there.